highlights on the water. Now, I don't want to overdo this, I'm just trying to hint at the, the light catching the water and the wet sand. So for now I'm going to leave that treatment as it is. And using a rather thinner brush this time, I'm just going to come in over here on the right. suggesting some of the, the waves lapping in here from the right-hand side of the painting. Now we've added some highlights, we need to put in some, uh, some darks now as well. So I'm going to begin with a dark colour down here. And actually that hasn't worked too well on that part, so I, I may remove that in a moment. It's a little bit darker than I thought it was going to be. But I think that same colour with a little bit of white in, touch. I think I can use that over here to pick out some of the wet sand. So let's see how that works. So. Yeah, that's working quite well. I, I like that. And I'll feather that same colour over the top of some of these areas. And some of the water here needs to be darkened. A little bit too. Now I need to sort this area out. So coming back in with a deeper version of that brown, let's just adjust the shape of that spit of sand, which actually now that I look at it is, is much closer to the, to the reality than the version I had. And we can introduce some variation of colour and texture across the sand here. Now that same colour I'm going to apply very lightly back here. And I'll be coming back to that little section in just a bit. Now I've mixed up a lighter orange and I want to introduce some of this into the water over here. Not too much, but just a hint. I want a little strip of, of uh, orangey colour here coming into the water. And then after that I'm going to put a little band of green off in the distance as well. So that's working quite well, and I've just added a little bit of titanium white to that same colour. Now that same colour I'm actually going to use on the, on the face of the cliff here to brighten it up a little bit. some of that down here too.
And I think I'm even going to include a little bit of that in the foreground. I quite like the, the orange placed in different positions around the painting to help the eye bounce around the frame. That, that seems to be working quite well. But I need to brighten up these highlights on the cliff face next. Sorry about that, I just realised I zoomed in a bit to hopefully show you some more of this detail. But in doing that, I forgot to zoom out when I put some stuff down here. So I hope you're able to see most of that. Uh, but I've hopefully got the entire painting in frame now. And so, as I said, I'm just going to brighten up these highlights on the cliff face. So this is, this is the same mix of orange as before, but with more cadmium yellow and more titanium white in. And as you can probably tell, I haven't mixed that colour too thoroughly, so I'm getting some variation in the colour that I put down on the page. So sometimes there are little areas of pure white, other times it's pure orange, other times pure yellow. And I think I'm actually going to use that same colour, but a little more sparingly for this distant cliff face here, or more distant cliff face. And then I can do the same thing again. that little strip of beach along there and then I'll grab a bit more white and put in the distant shoreline there now as we get closer I'm using the same color again but this time one edge of my brush has got pure red on and one, ed one edge of the brush, one corner, has got pure burnt umber on. So that's kind of creating this, you know, random mix of colours here. And it's not truly representative of what's there, but it does provide an interesting contrast with the, the simpler, more distant beach. So I'm going to use that same one here to pop in, that same colour here, to begin to pop in a couple of rocky outcrops. And then with a lot more burnt umber on the brush, 